Good morning. Why were the many false witnesses against Jesus unable to agree? We're looking today at Mark uh, chapter 14, verse 53 to 59. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. And many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. What a situation. For hours they meet together. They're trying to get some, surely they can get some testimony. Jesus, he's been teaching around there for years. There's, everybody's heard him teaching. Surely they can find something he said. They can twist some words he said, but no. Witness after witness comes forward, telling the priest, you know, the things they think he wants to hear. But nothing, nothing works. It's all in contradiction to each other. And why would this be? Well, they're telling false testimony, aren't they? This is, they're lying. The universe doesn't work that way. We can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. No weapon formed against God's people will, will prevail. We have these kind of insights from Scripture. The universe is built out of truth. You can't go against that grain and just expect la di da it's all going to work out according to your lies. No. The universe runs on truth. Everything else is, is kind of a, a short circuit. And so what do you have? Of these people are going up against the Lord of heaven and earth. Now, to get to an answer of why nothing is allowed to agree here, we'll, we'll see more of that, I think, tomorrow morning. You'll find a very satisfying answer. But for now, we're just looking here. And we have to recognize something about this, this business of uh, error and truth, lies versus truth. See, the Bible does contain a rule. It's the rule of sowing and reaping. And, you know, we will reap what we sow. That's inevitable, except for one thing. Jesus offers to die in our place, and so many times he delays our reaping what we've sown. We don't die immediately because of the mercies of God, and if we turn to him, if we turn to him, then what we have sown, Jesus will reap it. Jesus pays the penalty. Jesus is punished for our terrible things. Then we receive his, his mercy and his goodness. But now in the case of the wicked here, what? Well, the wicked reap what they sow, and this stuff inherently is discordant. It doesn't fit together. It doesn't work together. And so they are, you know, trying to maybe get a bribe, get some payout uh, by telling the priest what they want to hear. And so that's not going to happen. God's not going to allow it to happen. And uh, their discordant fake, fake, uh, fake news all kind of goes against itself. So, so nothing is allowed to uh, work, function against God's truth here. And I don't think God wants Jesus to be condemned on the basis of a lie. But we'll talk more about that tomorrow. You know, the Bible also says the way of transgressors is hard. And so this is going on for hours and nothing will agree. It's, it must have been quite a show, quite a show. It would be fascinating to see the video of that hearing. The way of the transgressor is hard, and we shouldn't be surprised that all these lies formed against Jesus came to nothing. Perhaps God kept them from prevailing in all these lies. Perhaps there's one final witness to many of them that, that he is on his throne, that truth does matter that good is, is better than evil. Perhaps this was a final witness for many of those people, lying, that, that their lies, if they could have had their way, would have gotten Jesus killed. But Jesus is not going to die based on lies. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he was the herald, the giver, the liver, the source even of truth. Thank you that we are given a privilege, an opportunity to serve you, to participate in your truth, to also live by and present your truth. Thank you for this, Lord. Thank you that no lie, no weapon formed against your truth will prevail. Bless us. Help us to be your agents of truth, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We should be determined to be living by truth people. Lies and usurped authority have no legitimate power over us. We're agents of the kingdom. God be with you today, and you have a wonderful day serving the Lord Christ Jesus.